Hey, the 11th of October is International Coming Out Day, and I was invited recently to write some words about what this means to me. The first thing I thought was to say nothing, because there are times when I still struggle with being completely open. But then I thought that maybe somebody could benefit from my own words and reflections and my own story. So I've got my words up on my screen here, and I thought that I would share them with you on this International Coming Out Day 2022. International Coming Out Day. As I reflect on what this means for me, I think about my journey from being in the closet to an openly gay man. I grew up in regional Australia where it certainly wasn't acceptable to be gay. I remember being a teenager trying to understand feelings I knew I wasn't allowed or supposed to feel. I felt confused, lost, lonely, and I remember it caused great pain to cope with the conflict of my own internal authentic self and the external world sending signals that being gay was dirty and shameful. I don't recall any role models on TV or radio that I could relate to, and those on TV and radio who were openly gay were camp and feminine, and I just couldn't relate to those people. Just after my 20th birthday in January 2003, I moved to London, and this opened my eyes and mind to a whole new world of different characters, styles, ways of thinking, and of course, sexual identities. For the first time, I felt like I could belong somewhere. In the June of that year, I finally admitted to myself that I'm gay. The first step to coming out is coming out to yourself. This isn't as easy as it may seem, and, and many may struggle with this on a daily basis. After some months of li living it up in London and falling in love with a Brazilian boy, I wrote my grandma, with whom I'm very close, a six-page coming-out letter from Brazil, telling her about my life and my partner. She and my mum took it very well and, and weren't surprised in the slightest. The next step was dad. I felt so ashamed and like such a disappointment to have to tell my dad that I wasn't the boy that I assumed he wanted me to be. The family name stops with me. Well, I never had to tell my dad because my grandma had given him that letter to read. And one afternoon in April 2004, I checked into an internet cafe in Bermondsey, London to check my emails. In my inbox was an email from dad. In the body of the email, he told me that he'd read the letter and in his words, he didn't care what cricket team that I played for. I was his son and that was all that mattered. I will never forget the ocean of tears running down my face as I read those words on the screen. Such a weight had been lifted. Since then, there have been countless times where I've had to come out. New social groups, jobs, work drinks, family events and classmates. I can think of many times when I was younger where I shunned work events and pub drinks fearing that I'd be cornered into telling colleagues about my sexuality. I feel sad for the younger me who, who so often felt he couldn't be open about who he was. The dreaded shame has reared its head time and time again over the years, and it's exhausting. Personally, I've come such a long way, and, and these words I'm writing to you is something that I could never imagine doing only a few years ago. But I still have a way to go. Even now, I find that I still rein myself in in certain situations, especially around groups of straight men. We learn to navigate the safe spaces where we, where we have more freedom to be ourselves. It's also quite difficult to unpack who we really are. And I think a good question to ask ourselves is, who am I when nobody's watching? I think all of us regardless of sexuality, have to navigate this in life. At 39, I'm in the best place that I've ever been and it feels good. Sharing my story with you feels good. But I think it's extremely important to think about, to think about those for whom coming out still causes great anguish and is not even an option. Those whose cultures or families may not accept varying forms of sexuality 
and are disowned or even given the horrific death penalty. In 2022, many of us are now openly discussing gender, pronouns, and are generally more open with regard to sexuality, and this is a brilliant leap forward. There are so many more safe spaces, but equally still, many occasions when the closet isn't too far away, ready to pull us back in and keep the door shut until it's safe to come out again. In recent years, we are talking more about the trans community, and they have a greater voice too, which, and rightly so. Now, I fully admit that I'm not qualified to speak on behalf of the trans community, so I won't pretend to do so. But ultimately, the place we need to get to is a place where who we are is encouraged and celebrated, and where everyone is given equal status and rights in our society. It's exhausting to live your life according to someone else's rule book, and I'd really invite everyone to work towards being their own authentic selves regardless of sexuality or gender stereotypes. So on this coming out day, we should encourage and celebrate with each other for who we are. Now finally, I have also put a link in my bio to the Stonewalls website, and there are some startling figures on the website which may encourage you to reach out to anyone struggling with their sexual identity. Tell them that it's okay to be who they are and that they are loved and valued for being themselves. Happy coming out day.